video, I'm just going to get into some quick little reviews. I don't want to say their first impressions. I don't want to say their full-blown reviews because you guys can let me know down in the comments if you want to see any reviews on these palettes particularly. Just let me know which ones. I feel like some of these, I don't really have too much to say about them other than like they're good, you should buy them, or they're not so great, don't worry about it kind of thing. Some of them are just kind of like older summer launches that I never got around to talking about on my channel and I'm feeling a little YouTuber guilt so I thought it would be a great way to just kind of do some like quick little like yes no yes no because you guys always ask me even on Instagram and here on YouTube what I think about particular palettes and etc etc so without further blabbering let's get into it so the first group of palettes that I should probably talk about are these palettes this is the Jaclyn Hill vault collaboration with Morphe I actually don't really support Morphe at all but the hype was so real with these and then after they delayed it I feel like I had the perfect out of not buying it but I was so curious that I bought it and for some reason once I received it and after all the drama I just have not felt inclined to touch these. Now mine don't have that V2 sticker on them. So knowing that this palette was coming out, I did pull out the original Jaclyn Hill palette and I actually did a few eye looks with this. And honestly, you know, regardless of my thoughts or opinions on Morphe, this palette does actually perform really well. To me, it does better than a regular Morphe palette, to be honest. At one point, I was really into Morphe, so I bought a lot of their larger eyeshadow palettes. I don't have any really anymore but this one I kept because it is that good and you know I'm a YouTuber so of course I want to have it as a reference and really I was so excited because I was like you know what this is a really good palette I'm so happy I have that but after I got these I don't know I just didn't I wasn't feeling it like this palette I have not even swatched like it's brand brand new I tried see even the purple one I haven't I haven't used these and I haven't felt drawn to them which I'm kind of freaked out about. I did try this one which is the Dark Magic palette. I was not blown away. I really wanted to try this shade Potion I believe. This green and I don't know it was just very blah. The quality did not feel as good as my original Jaclyn Hill palette so I was very very upset and so yeah I haven't oh I tried this one too and I didn't like this one either and I was like I feel like I got one of those dud palettes and I know Jaclyn Hill made a video saying hey return your Morphe palettes like if you feel like you got something that isn't good quality send them back and I really kind of wanted to take advantage of that but the thing with Morphe is you have to pay for your own returns and I was like well fuck now I have to like eat the cost of shipping this thing back to them and you know I don't really have a guarantee that uh, it's gonna make it there on time and then it's like if you want to pay for like you know guaranteed shipping and I just don't trust Morphe as far as I can throw them so I decided to just keep this I won't try and buy this again or anything like that to see if I can find anything with better quality let me know what you guys thoughts are if you want me to review this I I mean I need to dive in and actually try out all the palettes I don't think it's fair for me to come on here and give you guys this like full-blown like I don't like these but yeah let me know what you guys think let me know if you bought the vault how you feel about it for me I'm just like uh, kind of wish I hadn't done it like I, I should I should have just seen all the warning signs and just walked away but the curious camper in me just had to do it so that is my opinion on that now on a positive note let's talk about the Juvia's Place a freak palette actually I shouldn't say super positive I like the idea of this palette. I really, really do. I love this bottom row. It's an amazing array of neutrals. My problem with this is I was really excited for like this blue, this green, and this yellow, and they're okay. They're not like mind-blowingly good, so I was a little bit bummed about that. Juvia's is mostly known for their foil shadows though, and they have a great price point, so I'm not saying like I can't complain, but it wasn't like my favorite Juvia's Place palette to be very honest with you guys, but these shimmers are amazing and I can do a very neutral look with this palette or do something really fun, so I do like that about this palette. Okay, another fall palette that I kind of feel like this is my MVP palette so far for fall of uh, 2018. This is the ColourPop Good Sport palette. Oh my gosh. Now, 
I'm not saying this is like the most original color combination ColourPop has ever come out with. I mean, they hardly ever come out with anything that's mind-blowing color-wise. I just feel like the colors complement each other so well. The quality is good. The price is amazing. This shade, EBB, just like drives me crazy. It's so beautiful. I honestly could get rid of all the palettes in this video I'm talking about and use this one and be perfectly content with life. It's just that, you know, I do have a YouTube channel, so I do like to try out new things. But if I was just a regular person watching YouTube for fun and I wasn't that interested in makeup, I would still buy this palette because it's so good, you guys. It's so good. And if you don't believe me, check out the millions of other reviews on that palette. Now, I'll just get this out of the way because this is also going to sound very negative, but I do have the Ace Beauté. Uh, Paradise Collection. This is also another vault that just launched. Not just launched, it launched maybe a couple months ago. And this was another one where, first of all, they sent me... <laughs> I bought all four and they like messed up and sent me uh, two of the same one. So then I had to wait for the purple one to come. And as you can tell, I've used this palette, but again, I was expecting to love this particular palette and honestly, I just don't love the quality of this, um, the formula in this palette and it's kind of a bummer, but I haven't used Ace Beauté in a while. I do have the Quintessential palette, which was their first palette and I really remember loving that formula, but I don't love the formula of this one. I will show you guys a little dupe. This is the ColourPop Ooh La La palette. I did want to mention this in this video anyway, so I might as well do it now while I'm talking about a pink palette. To me, the ColourPop formula is always genuinely really just good. I'm really enjoying this. Like this bright pink shade called Sandbar is so pretty. I love the mattes in this palette. I love the size of this palette. It's so compact. I love that it has a color story. I love wearing pink on my eyes, so I'm so glad I picked that up and the price point is great. This one, I don't love so much and honestly, when you buy all four palettes, this is over $100. I tried this one. Again, I wasn't in love with the formula. I wasn't really loving how the shades were applying. And then I also tried the blue. And again, actually, I don't think I tried this one. So yeah, I think I just swatched this one and I haven't swatched or tried the purple one yet. So I'm just really on the fence about these Ace Beauté palettes. I know you guys have been asking me about them and I feel really bad because I want to talk to you guys about them but I feel like it wouldn't be fair for me to like come out and review them or tell you I don't like them without actually trying every single color on my eyes. So it's something I need to do. It's on my list of to-dos but I'm really dragging my feet because I have not been enjoying those formulas in those palettes. So if you're thinking about getting them, I just want to throw it out there that you might want to proceed with caution. Now here is another palette, you guys. I almost bought this to support the brand because Suba Beauty is a small indie brand based out of Canada and I love the founder. The girl that runs it, Shayna Azar, she has the best personality. She's so cool. She is Fijian Indian. Canadian because <laughs> she lives in Canada now and I, I love her personality. She reminds me of me like her personality and how like her outlook on life and stuff like that so I love following her on Instagram. She's super nice and so I bought this basically because I love what they stand for as a company and they just came out with a new palette too called the Saffron Palette and I want to buy it but if I bought it again it would be another support buy because it's a very neutral palette and I was like, okay, Karen, like, let's just relax because we have all those shades already. And this one is honestly, you guys have asked me about it. It is an intimidating palette. This is very scary for me. The great thing about Suva being a small company is they work so hard to show you how many different ways you can use this palette, which I completely appreciate. She was doing so many looks with this palette. She still is. And I honestly think that's so cool because so many companies are coming out with so many things right now that they don't even have time to do a review or a tutorial or let people even try things out and talk about their products. It's like there's a new product out the next week. So for all those reasons, I'm really happy I bought this palette, but their formula is okay. I don't love it. I don't know. For me, for some reason, it doesn't show up on my skin tone as beautifully as it does on her, which is weird because we're pretty close to the same color. 
I think it's just because I'm not very good at makeup. Like, I can get by you guys, but some people are so good at blending and, I don't know, doing these like crazy intricate looks and that's just not me. But I have this palette and I feel like if you feel like you can make these shades work, you should definitely check out the brand. I also have some of their older palettes and I ended up decluttering them because again, I wasn't getting any use out of them and recently I've just had more time to take a look at my eyeshadow palette collection and I was seeing how like over the top it was getting like yeah it's really nice to have like hundreds and hundreds of palettes in your makeup collection I'm not knocking anyone that wants to do that it's just personally for me I feel like hey like at this point I have every palette I need and I buy every palette I want but it's okay for me to make space so I got rid of those ones and now I just have block party which is great because you can't buy the other ones anyway so I don't know why I'd hold on to them for, you know, for no reason. Okay, so the next four palettes are these guys. So these are the Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes. I got Sapphire, Emerald, Ruby, and Amethyst. I originally thought I would love these two, but I ended up loving these two the most because I did two really great looks with these palettes. The green and the blue are, to me, a little bit more challenging to use because in this particular palette, there are three matte shades. This shade hardly shows up on me. This teal is gorgeous. I wore it one day and I was on Snapchat. This shade is like a good out, outer V color, but other than that, I don't know what else to do with it. So I'm still working on like creating color combinations with this one. And the blue one, this beautiful lime yellow shade, doesn't really, again, show up on my skin tone. So that's kind of a bummer, but I want to do more looks with both of these. These ones are more colors I gravitate towards. So it's very easy for me to come up with looks that I can do with this palette. I think they're beautiful. I prefer these much more to the original ones they came out with, which was like what? They had like a Marvelous Mobs and like those ones. Um, now these ones are made in China and Huda's bigger palettes are made in um, Italy, I believe. So I did see a difference in quality between like her Desert Dust palette and the original four that came out. These ones are a little less troublesome to me, but keep in mind I have not used these more than once or twice on my eyes yet in each. So I can't give you guys a full review on them yet, but I thought I would make this video just to kind of give you guys like quick little like yay nays on some palettes that I had really strong like thoughts on. And these ones so far are kind of in the middle. I think they're not terrible and they're definitely you know, more on the, like, I'm 70% satisfied with them, and I think you would be too. Now, not to be a negative Nelly, but this palette, I'm kind of bummed about because it honestly has the most beautiful shimmer shades, but I think the, the mattes they chose are such a letdown in this palette because I feel like all the shimmers are really warm tone, and then they gave us, like, two warm tone matte shades, and the rest of the mattes are very cool tone, and there's a black, and I... Just don't know how to combine these shades. I feel like the shimmers are gorgeous. Like, so beautiful, so easy to foil, so true to Anastasia's quality. But oh, I feel like, I don't know what they did with this palette, but it confuses me. The packaging's beautiful. It doesn't like shed glitter and stuff like that. So it's a very well-made, beautiful palette. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that is gonna get along really well with a palette like this, but I don't think that's me. The next one I want to talk about is this guy. This is like a face and eye palette, and I feel like this has been out for quite some time. This is the NARS Atomic Blonde palette, and I honestly was attracted to this because of the bronzer shade in here called Unleashed. And that's basically all I used from this palette. I have not put the eyeshadows on my actual eyes yet. I did swatch them. They're beautiful. I feel like this is such a great everyday palette for a girl on the go that just wants to throw a shimmer on her eyelids and be low maintenance. I think this is definitely great for you. The highlight is beautiful. It's a little bit light for me, but I think as I keep lightening up this winter, it'll probably work out really well. And there's a nice mirror. So this is a great travel palette. Or like I said, if you're kind of low maintenance and you don't need like 80 things to dip into every day, that's a good palette for you. Okay, the next palette I want to talk about is this guy. This is a gingerbread palette by Too Faced. I was so intrigued by this packaging, you guys. Too Faced has been doing a decent job this year for me so far. I really enjoyed the Tutti Frutti eyeshadow palettes. 
I like this one. I don't love it. I feel like I'm on the fence on this. It's like definitely 50-50. I feel like, again, like I said, the packaging's great. The whole concept is great. The shades are kind of a, mm, like they're shimmery, but I feel like they could be shimmerier. Um, they just didn't like, you know, go all the way. They're just like, I feel like you can still wear this palette to work if you needed to. Like, so, I don't know. I like it, but I don't love it. So, I, yeah, I don't know, you guys. It do, it doesn't excite me. Like, I was excited when I saw it was launching, but once I got it, I was like, oh, this wasn't as exciting as I thought. So, that is my opinion on that. Last palette that I got, and I'm actually excited about. This one actually excites me. This is the Natasha Denona Gold Palette, and you guys know I'm the first one to talk shit about Natasha Denona. I was really interested in this palette when I when it launched. I was gonna buy it immediately, and I was like, Karen, like think about it. It's $129. Like, do you really need to spend $129? And then I was like, okay, let me just buy it and see how I feel. And so I bought it, and I've worn this two days so far. It's actually the palette I'm wearing on my eyes today, and I actually really enjoy the makeup looks I've created so far. I'm really digging the shade. What is this shade called? Uh, Dijon. It's such a beautiful mustard shade. It looks amazing in the crease. I wore um, this shade partially on my uh, on my um, lid uh, with the look I created. So I did Lime Chrome and Aurora. Like I did uh, one half of my eye with Lime Chrome and then one half with Aurora and created this really beautiful look and yeah, today I wore the shade Brass, I believe, on my eyes. So yeah, I've used about five shades in this palette so far, and I really like them. I don't know if, you know, I would say, like, go spend the money right now, like, as I'm sitting here, go buy this palette. But honestly, from all the palettes I talked about today, except for the Huda ones and the Good, Good Sport palette by ColourPop, this is the palette that's really really been exciting me for fall 2018. Okay the last palette I want to talk to you guys about is the Born to Run palette by Urban Decay. This palette I love the packaging not just like the travel photos but the packaging in general is really nice. It's weighted, there's a gorgeous mirror um, but I love that you can just fold the mirror back and like use it like this and I don't love this palette and I don't hate it completely. I didn't want to buy this palette. I, I didn't, like, when it first came out, I had no inclination of buying it. And then I feel like I just had so many subscribers talk about how much they loved the Born to Run palette by Urban Decay. And I was like, fine, let me try it. So I bought it and I've worn it like two times. And it's good. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like when I look at all the palettes in front of me, is this the one, like, I would say, like, Okay, if you had a gun to my head and said, pick a palette, and this is the eyeshadow palette you had to use for the rest of your life, would I pick this palette? Absolutely not. So, yeah, I would say this is definitely down there on my list of palettes that I love, but I want to give this a solid chance. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a review on this or if it's just like kind of, you know, like the time has come and gone, Karen. Like Urban Decay already came out with like eight of the collections since the Born to Run palette, so you can just move on. If you feel that way, let me know so I can. <laughs> okay guys, I'm sure this video is like a million hours long, so thank you so much for bearing with me and going on this journey with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said earlier, if you want me to review any of these palettes, just leave me a comment down below. It really helps me out. Otherwise, we can move on because your girl's already got other palettes to play with like the Divinity palette by Strobe Cosmetics. This is gorgeous. I just got this in the mail the other day, so I'm very, very excited to play with this. And I also got the Menagerie Cosmetics Barrel palette, which I am also anxiously awaiting its arrival. So yeah, got lots of things to talk about on my channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.